What is safety case? Why do companies develop it? What kind of information should be mentioned there? How can we start? And what are the main references we can use? A safety case is a study required for installations that carry hazardous materials in certain quantities and which may cause major accident events such as fires, explosions, or toxic material release. This may cause a catastrophic impact on individuals, environment, and the company's reputation. This is, of course, in addition to the massive financial loss. In safety case, companies demonstrate their abilities to control and manage all possible risks that could lead to major accidents to as low as reasonably practicable, or what is called a LARP where any additional risk reduction measure will cost effort, time, and money that are significantly disproportionate with the risk reduction value. Now, why do companies develop it? Some countries enforce companies in the chemical and process industry to develop safety case. So, to get an approval to your project, you will have first to submit a design safety case and to get a license to operate your facility later. You will have to submit an operational safety case, which shall be updated regularly or in case of major changes in your installation to keep your license valid. What about Egypt? Earlier, some international oil companies were developing safety cases for their joint ventures and also sometimes other investors or insurance companies may request a safety case. But recently and exactly in January 2019, the Egyptian General Petroleum Corporation EGPC asked all its affiliated companies to develop safety cases for their facilities. What kind of information should be available in safety case? We can show all the required information through five parts. Part 1. Facility Description Part 2. HSE Management System and Major Accident Prevention Policy Part 3. Risk Analysis Studies Part 4. Emergency, Evacuation and Rescue Preparedness Part 5. Alarm Demonstration Let's start with the first part, Facility Description. In this part, we can find information about the company and the installation, such as the geographical location and the nature of the installation activities. This is of course in addition to the quantities of the hazardous material, the operating conditions, and the existing safety and control systems. We also provide all drawings that show equipment distribution and process flow, such as plot plans and process flow diagrams. Moving to the second part. In this part, we describe the company's HSE management system and the major accident prevention policy that include the company's arrangements and procedures that are being followed to prevent the major accidents in accordance with the applicable regulations and standards. In the risk analysis studies part, we describe all the risk and safety studies that have been carried out to identify all major accident hazards, possible causes, potential consequences, and the existing preventive and mitigation measures. Also in this part, we identify all safety critical elements that are in place and describe all safety critical activities responsible for keeping those elements effective. Besides, we identify the safety critical positions responsible for ensuring the effectiveness of those critical elements through securing the required resources and competencies to perform the safety critical activities. The risk analysis studies that can be used to identify the major accident hazards and safety critical barriers may vary depending on the nature and size of the installation. However, EGPC has identified specific studies for these purposes. Those studies are Hazard Identification Study, Hazard and Operability Study, Major Hazard Identification and Register, Bowtie Analysis, Fire and Explosion Risk Assessment, Quantitative Risk Assessment. The fourth part emergency, evacuation, and rescue preparedness. In this part, the company describes the emergency, evacuation, and rescue plan within the installation, including all major accident hazards that have been identified from previous risk assessment studies and defines individuals' responsibilities during emergencies, and the company's approach to ensure the effectiveness of this plan through providing the necessary equipment or personal training the last part, alarm demonstration. 
In this part, the company demonstrates that it has taken all applicable risk reduction measures to the ALARP level. And to achieve that, the company describes the criteria it followed to demonstrate the ALARP. This happens through analyzing all results from the risk and safety studies and listing all recommendations that came out from all those studies with their status. Now to the last and the most important part, how to start and what are the main references. After what we know, what a safety case is, why do we need to develop it, and what are the required information in it? We need to do two things. First, we need to identify those who are qualified to collect information and participate in the required studies. Secondly, we need to determine what information are available and what are missed. Then, we can develop our action plan and execute it either by our internal resources or through a consultant who has expertise and competence to produce it. And there are many sources that could help you in your journey to develop your safety case. Some of the most useful sources are EGPC, Technical Guide for Safety Case Preparation, Control of Major Accident Hazards, Coma 2015, for Onshore Facilities, and Offshore Safety Case Regulations 2015 for Offshore Facilities. Finally, it's important to know that the company that owns the installation shall be accountable for the accuracy of all provided information and tracking and implementation of all recommendations that have been generated from the safety case study.